What's up guys? Mike here from Powers Carvings and Crafts coming at you today with another video. So today's video is going to be on my everyday carry pack. So stick around. So this is my everyday carry pack. As it sounds, I carry it everywhere I go. Um, normally it stays in the car with me or if I'm at work it stays in the van. But what I use this bag for is one, it carries kit that's too bulky to fit in my pockets that I might need from day to day. Two, I use it as a get home bag. What's a get home bag? You're out and about, something happens, your car goes down, your cell phone died, yada yada yada. It's just things that will help affect your survival for the better in order for you to walk home. Um, whether that scenario is, like I said, your cell phone died or it's out of service and your car battery's dead and you're on a rural road but you know how to walk home and it's late in the evening this thing will help you get a good night's sleep get some food in your belly get some water and get you home and keep you warm everything like that or if that scenario is an EMP goes off and all electronics die and you need to get home to get your to your designated bug out bag which I will have a video on coming up soon and your designated bug out kit uh, this thing will help you get home. Now, I also use this bag as a uh, supplementation to my bug out kit. So I won't just dump this, take my bug out bag and leave. However, I could if I needed to because most of the things in here are uh, doubled up for my bug out bag. But that's just a quick explanation of what this everyday carry bag is. Um, so we're going to start from the top and work our way down. There's many pockets in this pack. Um, if you're wondering, this is the 511 Rush 12, I want to say. Does it tell me? I know it's 511, but I believe this is the Rush 12 or 24. It's a 21 or 22 liter pack. And it's just big enough to fit everything I need. It's comfortable on the back. This Y strap here is amazing. The zippers, it's got YKK zippers, you can't beat them. It's got a hydration bladder pouch that I actually don't use for a hydration bladder. It's got these pads here, which are amazing. I've gone hiking in this thing for up to seven miles, eight miles, and it's been absolutely fantastic. So I said this start in the uh, uh, work our way down, but first I'm gonna start here. This is a roll of one inch Gorilla Tape. Duct tape is gold, doesn't matter if it's day to day life, Survival scenario, bug up back scenario, shit hit the fan scenario, whatever. Duct tape's gold. I always keep duct tape on me. Um, on this side of the pack, I have two bank line loops that I use for this guy here. If I need to pop an axe on my pack, I slip them through my bank line loops. And whenever I'm carrying it, it just hangs there. So... That's the outside of the pack. So now let's start from the outside and work our way in. Right up top here. Another thing I love about this pack is you can fold these all the way open. So, boo boo kit. Cuts, scrapes, abrasions, little tiny bruises, a little bit of aspirin in here, a little bit of antibiotic ointment, and some gauze for boo boos. Quick access tourniquet. Now, I want to say a quick caveat off of this. Um, know how to use any med gear you carry. If you carry a gun, you should carry a tourniquet because if you're carrying a gun, you believe that you can get in a scenario where shots will be fired. You're not the only one that's going to be shooting in that scenario. Someone will be shooting back at you or trying to harm you. Quick access tourniquet is gold get the proper training or now i'm not saying youtube is is a substitute for proper training but you can learn to use the gear quickly off of youtube and off of dvds i know gray bearded green beret he offers like wilderness survival skills uh i'm sorry wilderness medical skills dvds and i've heard they're pretty good i haven't bought them um i am trained in how to use my med gear so i will just say that um, proper training is key. Um, 
then use YouTube and videos and articles to supplement your training. Quick access tourniquet, boo-boo kit. This is my designated trauma kit. I won't go through all of its contents right now, but it does have uh, lots of gauze, has rolled gauze, it has um, hemostatic gauze, which is a blood clotting gauze. Um, it has S-rolled gauze, like I said, it's a lot of gauze. It has rubber gloves, another tourniquet, and an Israeli bandage. This is not something that is going to, um, or this is something that is going to save a life. Um, it's not going to be pleasant, it's not going to be amazing, but it can plug holes, apply tension, and apply pressure. So that's what you really need for bullet wounds and stabs, is plugging holes um, and applying pressure and applying uh, constriction around joints. Again, get the proper skills uh, to use your med gear. Toothbrush, spare toothbrush. I don't carry toothpaste, I do in my bug out bag, but it's always nice to be able to brush your teeth at night or in the morning or both, like I do. Um, you don't necessarily need toothpaste. Toothpaste is nice, it makes your breath all minty and it does help kill bacteria. But most bacteria grows on your teeth because of food left there. So just having some bristles is really nice to be able to brush your teeth at night. Um, it's, a good, it's a good morale booster too. Just kind of makes you feel a little bit more at home. Um, and it's a hell of a lot better than taking a branch and trying to scrub your teeth with it because that can cause splinters. Fire kit. Uh, fire kit should be tailored to your skill level. If you are not a good fire starter, um, or you want quick access fire, carry tools that will help you facilitate that. Um, these are cotton balls and Vaseline. I have a bunch of sticks of fat wood in here. I have a six inch by, I believe, half inch ferro rod with a one inch roll of duct tape at the top. And I have a Bic lighter with duct tape around it and one more stick of fat wood. So in my bug out bag, I do also have solar, um, but these methods is what I'm most, most comfortable with. So this is what I carry. Let's go ahead and zip this up, get back onto it. Going further in this pack, or in this outer pouch, my firearm. This is a Smith & Wesson uh, Shield Plus 9mm. This is a We The People holster. Um, I do carry a firearm. I do have my concealed carry permit. I'm not advocating anyone to carry a firearm, but um, I my personal beliefs are if you can legally carry one, you should. We're not going to dive any further into that than we have to. And an antibiotic ointment. Jeez. That goes with a boob kit. Spare mag for my firearm. And a bottle of iodine. Tincture of iodine 2%. It's good for disinfecting wounds and it's good for disinfecting water. And that is it for this outer pouch. Moving on to the zipper pocket here. What do I have in here? Uh, business cards, first of all. Um, if you need pressure washing and you're in the Bradenton, Florida area, make sure you contact my brother at Hydrojet Pressure Washing. So, check them out. Um, this is my Spyderco Double Stuff stone case, but I don't really carry that. Tool maintenance. DMT coarse, DMT fine, and one of my straps that I sell, my field strap. I am a firm believer, like Dave Canterbury says, as going in the field tool heavy. Also, I use my knives really hard at work, and it's really nice to be able to sharpen them on the go. So, that's just a little sharpening kit that I carry. What else do we have in here? I'm full of surprises. I have a compass. What kind of compass is this? Uh, Noor? Indoor? It's just a made in Taiwan compass. Um, if you are going to get a compass, definitely have one with a bezel ring so you can shoot an azimuth and uh, navigate. But uh, this is just a cheapo one. Um, it works. I've used it. I've navigated with it. And it works just fine. So you don't need to go all crazy on your compasses. Also, I have in here Sharpie and a pen, writing utensils. Okay. 
Before we get into the meat and potatoes, we're gonna go to my quick access pouch. Headlamp. I do carry a pocket flashlight, but it's really nice to go hands-free if you can. Carmex. I'm a big fan of Carmex and not having chap lips. Because whenever you uh, get out of the field and you go home to Kiss Bay, you want to have nice, soft, supple lips. Uh, Six-foot shock cord, paracord, uh, daisy chain together. It's just like a quick, quick access piece of paracord if I need some rope. Spare pocket knife. This one's a Chris Reed Sebenza 21, or a small Sebenza, my bad. And some PD Light pouches. Um, you can buy PD Light pouches like this. They're really nice, really good pick me up, especially if you're out in the field and you're getting dehydrated. They're really good for that. What do I keep inside the hydration bowl? Everyone's wondering. If I can get it out without ripping my pack, there we go. It is a grill plate. Grilling food, catching food. Um, actually, it was a cooling rack that I bought at Goodwill, and I just cut it up into a small enough piece to fit in my pack. So I'm gonna shove that back in there. But, all right. Now on to the meat and potatoes. I'm running out of room on my table. Let's unclip these. Take the tape off. Pull these zippers all the way down. Boom. Start with the outer pouches out here. I have a, another thing of chapstick. I don't like chap clips. And I have an absolute array of writing utensils, highlighters, markers, pens, pencils, colored pencils. I use a lot of Write in the Rain products, so pencils and colored pencils and markers are always with me. This pouch here, I have an emergency space blanket. Um, as Greybeard to Green Beret, uh, Joshua Enyard over there, um, what he says is uh, you should always have something to sleep under, sleep on, and sleep in. This is my sleep in. Um, my bug up bag, I, it contains a Wooby. It's my Wooby from the service. I love it. Don't tell them I stole it, please. A little bit of extra quick to grab six foot lengths of cordage, daisy chain. I like daisy chain because it's really easy to get out. And you can pull a length of cord if you need to cut it. That's Well, I do six foot lengths so I don't have to cut it. Because most of the things you can do, you can do with a six foot length, whether it's a small piece or a big piece. But if you need to cut it, you can pull a little bit out and snip it. All of these have a, uh, well, I guess not all of them because that one doesn't, but most of my quick cords have a bowling knot tied on one end and a stop knot tied on the other. I dropped my business cards. Reading material. This is Bushcraft 101 by David Canterbury. Um, great book. It has a lot of, it has a wealth of knowledge in it check it out. Um, another thing to supplement your medical stuff is he has a wilderness first aid book as well. It's really awesome. Dave Canterbury makes a lot of good stuff. I'm going to start throwing this on my workbench because I don't have anywhere to put it over here. Shemog. Um, I always have a couple cotton bandanas on me anyway, but a shemog's just really nice to have. Really good for filtering water. It's really good for getting the sun off you if you need to. Wrap it around your neck if it gets cold because you lose a lot of heat through your carotid arteries and your uh, femoral arteries and your brachial arteries because they're closer to the skin. Really good to help keep you warm. Um, thousands of uses for this, guys. Filtering water, headdress, bug net, um, help dressing wounds if you need to. Um, you can wrap it with water, wrap it around your neck, keep you cool. You can keep it dry, wrap it around your neck, try to keep you warm. There's just so many uses for this. Shemogs are not that expensive. Right here, this is, I'm not gonna pull it out because it's a pain to put back, but this is my military poncho with a 30 foot uh, ridge line inside of there with bank line already tied to it for tie out points. So that's my sleep under. My sleep on is a climate blow up uh, uh, sleeping pad. 
I'm a side sleeper, and this thing is awesome. Awesome. I've had a lot of blow up ones and those rubber mat ones and whatever, and I hate it. I'm being a side sleeper. It sucked. This thing, I'm a side sleeper, and this thing is absolutely amazing. So that's my sleep on. Extra pair of wool socks, extra pair of uh, ankle socks. I carry these because um, I am a plumber and my feet get wet very often. So it's nice having two pairs of socks. These are cotton, so I will switch to these first. If they get soaked again, then I'll switch to a, a fresh pair of wool socks. I mostly wear wool every day. Um, wool's amazing. Canteen cup. Also, full surprises. I have a piece of wood wrapped with a uh, bank line. This is all not one solid piece of bank line. This is cut pieces I've used before. And I just didn't want to throw them away, so they're all wrapped up in here. There's probably about 25 feet or 30 feet wrapped on here at bank line. And the rest of it is paracord, more six foot lengths. I am a cordage whore, I love cordage. SE3. Um, my SE4 stays in my bug out bag, but my SE3 is just as capable. It's thinner as well, um, but it's just as durable, just as amazing. Um, this thing is awesome. I love SE knives. And this is an Armidus Carry Architect sheath that I have it on. One MRE. This one is Chili Mac. Thank God. need some food on the go. Um, I don't carry a water bottle in this pack. That's because I always have my water bottle with me at work. So there's no water bottle in this pack. But I do have a means of boiling water if I need to. What else is back here? I have some weird stuff in here. Um, pliers. I lost my Leatherman Wave and I can't find my Leatherman Rebar and I haven't bought a new pair yet. So I just put a pair of pliers that I got from the flea market these are Globemaster, made in Taiwan. They're pliers, guys. I mean, they work. I have this uh, piece of steel that I found at my grandfather's shop. I'm not exactly sure what it's for. Um, it's for some sort of uh, car tool, I'm sure. But it's just a piece of tempered steel. I can use it as a pry bar, as a digging bar. It's chiseled on one end. So, I don't know, I just thought I could use it. Um, I have used it a few times as a sort of pry bar. Running out of room. Baco Laplander saw. I'm just going to start throwing stuff back in the pack. Um, a knife is really nice, but you're not going to be able to take down an uh, ample amount of wood with it. And the saw on my Swiss Army knife is small but capable, but still small. Four ABS plastic tent pegs. Buy them at Walmart for like 80 cents or something. If one breaks, I buy a new one. This one's stressed. I'm actually going to have to buy a new one of that. But yeah, something to stake out my. Um, I want to get a more neutral color, but it's just something to stake out my uh, poncho. Two 55 gallon drum liners. Can use them as makeshift ponchos, collecting, making beds, just whatever. Um, they're good additions to a shelter. They're just good to have. And that, I don't know why my charging brick's in here, but it's a good thing I went through this today because I've been missing it. So that's it, guys. Um, that was a quick run through of all the contents of my everyday bag. Um, this thing goes, like I said, this thing goes with me everywhere. Um, I'm a big firm believer in the five C's that Dave Canterbury teaches. Cutting tool, cordage, container, uh, covering element, and combustion device. So I have those five C's here, plus a little bit extra and a couple of redundancies as well. So um, I'm also a firm believer in carrying a firearm. Um, I'm not telling you to go against your laws if they don't, if they're like an unconstitutional state and they don't allow you to carry a firearm. I'm not telling you to go against your laws there, um, but your life is more important than anything else, so just take that into effect. And on that note, it's good to get training in uh, trauma care as well as first aid and CPR 
and um, also get trained in a firearm if you are going to choose to carry one and do some training in survival skills. You don't need to go crazy. You don't need to learn how to live off the fat of the land and everything. Being able to affect your survival for a couple of days is what mo is all most people need in order to survive because that's a situation they'll get put in. Um, this pack not only goes with me every day, this is also my hiking pack. Um, most of the time I bring my bug out bag camping. So most of the time the bug out bag is my camping bag, but I have gone on one nighters with this kit, slept under the poncho. And all I did really is add some extra water on top of it because this, even with all this gear in here, I still have probably only about two thirds of the big of the main pack taken up with all this gear and I can still fit food and water up top here. Um, as far as the sleeping gear, people are like, people might say that it's too much sleeping gear. Um, I like to sleep comfortably. There's nothing better than a good night's sleep, whether you're at home or in the field or in distress somewhere. A good night's sleep will have your head thinking clearer. It conserves water in your body. It conserves calories. So um, sleeping is better than not sleeping. So I like to sleep comfortably. So again, guys, Get the ample training, carry the right gear, uh, sleep well, and above all else, don't forget to subscribe. Hey, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. I love you. See you on the next one.